everyone, Phil from Ember Prototypes here. So we've been doing a really big biomed project for a local company here in Vancouver, and we've been printing a lot of these little adapters on our Form 3B, which is this guy right here. Now, we only have one Form 3B, but we've got the 3L, which you see over there, which is the big, the big boy, and then we have another Form 3. Uh, but for biomed applications, we can only print on, on this guy. So I wanted to just make a short video kind of showing a day in the life of what it's like to print these parts in a production capacity. We basically print an entire build plate. So this is like 14 parts on a whole build plate on the Form 3 B and we do that twice a day. So each build takes around seven and a half, eight hours. And so we'll do it, we'll run one in the morning, we'll run one later in the evening, and then basically can make 28 parts every day. Uh, and we're doing this to help this company as a stopgap until they get their injection molding up and running because they have a lot of demand for their customers, which is always a great problem to have. Uh, and it's really cool that we can make these parts in a production capacity with 3D printers while they're doing something more traditional like injection molding. Hopefully this will be interesting to some of you who are curious about 3D printing but don't have experience with additive manufacturing at a production level. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do before we do any printing is to set up our actual print file. So this is Preform basically the slicing software that Formlabs uses for their machines. And I've renamed the file and kind of hidden all the sensitive data that uh, might be associated with this model. So like I described in the intro, there are actually seven by two parts squished into this bill plate. And there are several important things that I just wanted to describe that's kind of specific to our process and our history of experience using these machines. So with different resin types, the support touch point size will be different. Formlabs is generally very conservative about these numbers because they basically want to maximize success rates over ease of post-processing. Now, for somebody like myself who has a ton of experience printing with Formlabs machines, I routinely make these touch point sizes very small, basically as small as they'll go. So if we go into the support settings, Preform used to show you what the actual touch point size is when you would select one or all of the support touch points. Uh, it no longer does that after a certain update, which is a little annoying, but not that big of a deal. So we will just compare visually instead. So by default, Biomed Durable is a 0.5 millimeter touch point size, which is this guy, this big guy here. And I'll just place one there next to the support sizes that we already had. And I believe that is a 0.4 millimeter. Yeah. So instead of 0.5 millimeters, we typically go down to 0.4. With durable and flexible materials, you can actually go down even further to 0.35. Um, we didn't choose to do that for this model just because we're doing this in a production capacity and we do want to make sure that success rates are pretty high. I definitely have gone down to 0.3 millimeters for durables and for tough resins. So much, much smaller than what the default suggests, and you can still have very high success rates. You just need to know and understand where supports need to be and how many supports need to go onto your part. I will always step through the slicer layer by layer like this. And basically what you're looking for is you're looking to see if there are any unsupported overhangs that might cause problems printing. So you can see here that, you know, as you're stepping through it, everything's supported 
quite well. Um, and because the layer sizes in SLA are quite small, you can get away with quite a lot of unsupported overhangs. And I usually just kind of step through this whole thing. Um, and then also stepping through it in this view can be helpful as well. There aren't a lot of gotchas that I can really highlight uh, in this case, but yeah, small support touch point sizes to minimize post-processing and also just kind of stepping through to make sure there are no unsupported overhangs or minimas or anything. Um, and then another important thing to note is we've actually squished and arrayed everything together so that the raft comes off in one piece. We could print this without a raft, which would lower the resin consumption a little bit. Uh, and not in this case, but there are some instances where, you know, you could arrange things so that the rafts aren't connecting, but we've purposely left a raft on and we've purposely combined everything so that it just comes off easy in one go. So that's pretty much it for this part. Again, very simple. Um, so once we upload this to the printer, then we can get started printing. So the resin that we're using is Biomed Durable. And this is actually a clear resin. But to get the parts to come out with this nice translucent blue, we actually just use some alcohol dye or alcohol ink. And we just drop a certain amount into the cartridge and we shake it up and that's how we get the color that we want. So now that we've put the dye in, I basically just need to shake the hell out of it to really mix all the dye and the resin together. So once the print's done, we'll just get our little tray, their basket ready. Pull it off of the printer. And this is what the parts look like straight off of the printer. And we actually have a flex plate here, so I can actually just squeeze and the whole thing just pops right off. And then into the wash tank, this basket goes. Now we actually print this array in two orientations. So one that's just like standard orientation and another one that's oriented 90 degrees. And the reason for that is to just avoid what's called burn-in, which is basically printing in the exact same spot on the print tank over and over again, because that has a higher likelihood of damaging the film and damaging the tank in the long run. Okay, so we printed the second version of this part that we're repeatedly printing. And as I mentioned earlier, it's rotated 90 degrees to prevent burn-in on a tank. So you can see this is the orientation that it printed this time, and that's what it looked like last time. Kind of an interesting side note, um, these parts will never release off of this flex plate, no matter what. Uh, and it's for two reasons. One is this material is a durable type resin, so it's quite flexible. The second reason is because of the orientation that these parts have been arrayed in, they just fan out because there's like no stiffness in this direction. Whereas if you look at the older parts, there is stiffness in this kind of bending direction because the parts are arrayed that way. And so those parts pop off no problem. Although actually these parts these parts won't pop off either if the resin or if the parts are still warm. So if it comes off of the printer 
fairly soon after a print is complete, I actually can't get these off either. So in these situations, I still have to use my tools, but it's fine. Um, I have these really great tools that make it very easy. And this technique of kind of like snipping in the corners with side cutters and then using like a really nice scraper to get under is, is very easy. So we'll just do this when we can't release the parts and just get under most of it and then, and then it will just pop off. A bit of an interesting and kind of unexpected outcome of doing all of this, but if you have the right tools, it doesn't really matter. So uh, I'll leave a link to the tools in the description below if you wanna buy a pair. Now that all our parts are removed and we've got two in the basket, we're gonna put it in the wash now and we'll basically just repeat this. We'll start printing in the morning, do another print in the evening. Once we have two in the basket, we wash it and we'll just repeat this over and over again until we've made all the parts that we need for our client. So once parts come out of the wash, this is basically what they look like. And they're very easy to just peel off by hand. Having the very small support touch point sizes makes this process really easy. And thankfully for these parts, we don't actually need to do any sanding or further post-processing. We just peel it off the supports in the raft and then we pack them up. So basically once we're done taking parts out of the sports, we'll throw the raft and the extra supports away and we'll keep track of inventory just using a whiteboard that we have in the shop. And something to call out during this process that we discovered was that packaging these parts flat on packing paper was a bit of an issue because sometimes the packing paper would leave small bits of residue onto the part. And so Halfway throughout the process, we swapped over and started just bagging these in plastic bags, which ended up working out really well. It's just kind of funny thinking about some of these processes for production and for shipping that somebody who just is printing a functional part, like you never really need to think about. Well, I hope that was interesting for you to see our process around how to optimize efficiency for producing parts like this. There's a lot of work behind the scenes at the beginning where you're trying to figure out what support sizes to use, like how many pieces you can pack on a bill plate and easily still pull off. So there's a lot of, I guess, design for manufacturing things that go into the beginning of this process to make sure that, you know, when we're doing this in production, everything's really easy, everything's very streamlined. Uh, thoughts about like if one build takes 10 hours can I do two builds in one day do I need to have less parts on the build plate so that I can actually do two in one day a lot of really interesting things like that when you're doing production work so yeah hope it was fun to live vicariously through me doing some production work um, as always thanks for watching really appreciate it if you have questions about the process just leave me a comment down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next video.